I'm joined here today by a newly minted UFC fighter, Brianna Van Buren, made the successful debut at UFC Sacramento. Brianna, how are you today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. And uh, so you're doing pretty well, made the short notice debut. Everything went well. Uh, how do you sort of look back on that fight? Um, I mean, I wish I would have got the finish, but it is what it is. Um, uh, you know, I'm excited. I was excited then, and, you know, I'm still excited now. And the fight was, of course, on short notice. But before we talk about the actual fight, how did this come together? Because I feel like, uh, you know, it kind of came out of the blue that you'd come in as a replacement. How did things happen on your end? Yeah, um, so what happened was uh, Cynthia Cabillo had, you know, obviously hurt her foot. And um, they had contact. My manager had called me when I was going, on, going for a run. And um, he asked me, you know, what did I think about uh, Olivia? And, you know, if I wanted to fight her in July and, you know, and I felt like I was ready for it. So I, um, I said, yes, let's do it. And uh, what's the emotion like when your manager calls you up? And I assume it's not a done deal yet. They're sort of throwing that idea out there. But what starts to happen in your mind when you feel like, oh, man, I might be making my UFC debut uh, pretty soon? Yeah. So I, I kind of expected the call to happen. Um, one way or another it was just you know whether it was just the, the amount of time i knew it was going to happen um i just didn't realize that it was going to happen um in july mm -hmm. uh it was funny because right after the fight right after my fight with invicta in may i remember telling my my head coach you know it'd be awesome to get on the card um you know in sacramento uh, for the UFC and then um, you know they called us and and the opportunity was there so we took it and obviously you mentioned the short notice so what was that training camp like I assume you guys had to do a little bit of scrambling to get ready or what was that camp like um, honestly I didn't really look at it as too much of a short notice I mean I had about five weeks to prepare specifically for this uh, for this girl so um, it wasn't so much of a short notice for me uh, obviously, um, you know, I had just fought in May, so, and I was, I went right back to work right after that, uh, meaning, you know, I was right back in the gym and, you know, um, I did what I had to do. So I didn't feel like I was out of shape. Um, but you know, it was good. It was fine. It was, you know, it was a little bit different, obviously from, you know, in May I had a 12 week camp. Uh, to coming in and preparing for Livia for a five week camp. It was a little bit um, short on that outcome, but I didn't I didn't feel like it was too much of a short notice fight. And uh, are you someone that kind of, uh, I don't want to say trains full time, but we hear fighters where they're saying, you know, they're always in the gym and they don't necessarily have to get ready because they stay ready. Is that kind of a, what your situation is? Um, I feel like you have to prepare yourself no matter what. Uh, no matter what, I'm in the gym training, um, but uh, you know, I had five weeks specifically to, to train, um, you know, to fight Olivia. And for me personally, I didn't feel like it was that short of a notice. Um, I, I know that I have some history on taking short notice fights, like on one, two, three weeks notice. But in this case, it wasn't too short of a notice for me. Um, I do kind of see the, you know, what you mean by, um, as far as like, I don't have to get ready because I stay ready, which is true. Um, I'm pretty much always training, but I do also see, you know, uh, I don't take my opponents lightly, but you know, I let my coaches do all of the work. And if they feel like I'm prepared to step in that cage, then, you know, I don't see why, why I wouldn't have taken the fight. And that that's basically what happened with Livia. My coaches felt like I was ready. Um, it was a good, it was a yes for them. They said, are we doing it? And it was pretty much, I'm all in. So I just stayed committed. And so you finally made the UFC debut. And we know a lot of guys that talk about, uh, the octagon jitters and being nervous, getting on that big stage. Did you experience any octagon jitters? And what was that emotion like before you made the walk to the cage? You know what? It was, it was so weird. So, um, leading up to the fight, everything was completely normal. Um, nerves were there. Um, you know, but it wasn't, I, I kind of felt like I was maturing in a sense because I, I didn't really have those jitters that I normally have, but the nerves were still there, if that makes sense. However, 
um, during uh, fight week, everything, you know, it was, the nerves were still there. They were kicking. It was like a roller coaster. And then um, the day of the fight, I was feeling good towards warm-ups and everything. And, you know, I was feeling fine and, you know, felt on point. And as soon as I made that walk, um, I couldn't feel my legs. Like, mm-hmm. I literally was like, what the heck is going on? Um, and then I felt like I got kind of like a fore- forearm pump. So I, de- I definitely felt like the adrenaline dump as I was walking, making that walk out to the cage. And then um, after that, I everything kind of went away. Like as, as soon as I got into that cage, it was it was go time. <laughs> but it was the weirdest thing ever. I definitely did get uh, feel the jitters. I definitely got the UFC jitters. And uh, I'm sure fighters they always think about you know making that debut, how they'd like it to happen, and stuff like that. Did this kind of happen in your mind how you expected it, or were there some things that were kind of unexpected? Um, I knew she was going to be tough. Uh, I think, you know, her getting in my face a little bit and, you know, trying to rile me up a little bit kind of played a little, got a little bit in my head, but, um, I wanted to get the finish. Um, and, and I didn't expect to like, I, again, I wasn't looking past her or anything, but I was like, you know what, I'm going to go in there and try to finish this chick. Um, ideally I wanted to knock this chick out, but, um, you know, from looking back at the tape, I feel like I did an okay job um, as far as uh, making my UFC debut. And uh, you mentioned that uh, it got in your head a little bit. What does that do for you mentally? Does that add an extra fire? Does it make you a little bit nervous because you think the stakes are higher? What does that kind of do to you? Um, I think it just adds more fuel to the fire, if anything. Um, you know, I was going in there to... I, I, she she kind of... it was. A, I knew off of the bat it was a little bit fake. Uh, seeing that I came in during fight week and, you know, she shook my coach's hands and everything about it, it just seemed like it was just not genuine at all. Um, she shook my coach's hands during check-ins and, uh, you know, she didn't really say anything to me uh, throughout fight week, kind of kept staring at me, looking at me up and down and just kind of walking around with her chest out. And, you know, um, and that right there kind of told me that, you uh, she had some sort of uh, an insecurity issue. Um, and I kind of felt like I kind of uh, beat her already. I kind of won already mentally. Um, and then, you know, when she got, when she got in my face, it, it just kind of solidified it. Like, it was like, okay, like, you know, she kind of saw me as a threat more than anything. Um, and, you know, I don't think she thought that that's what I thought, but it is what it is. And, you know, the fight is over with. And so when the fight was over with, obviously things go great, things go your way. You hop on social media, get back on your phone, you know, Instagram, Twitter. What did you think of the fan reactions? What did you sort of see? Because from my end, it looked like there was a lot of positive and a lot of people kind of uh, figuring out who you were for the first time. Yeah, I think, honestly, it's the same. I had the same uh, feeling as well. Like, I think people are even still to this day still trying to figure out who is this chick. She's a wrestler. Um, she wrestles, you know, uh, at... I trained over there with DC and, you know, all these things. And I think going in, a lot of people thought that I was just a wrestler. Um, But to be quite honest with you, I'm a mixed martial artist. And, you know, I know a lot of athletes say say it, but it it is what it is. And hopefully me making that, me making my debut and putting on, you know, a striking clinic on my opponent, I was able to, to show people that that's who I am. But I still have a lot to learn. Um... The fans showed me nothing but love, even still to this day. I mean, I have people, I I just got fan mail today um, from my gym, and, you know, it's pretty awesome. Like, people are just showing me love, and and it's cool. I love it. And uh, I know last time we talked, you just gotten off of winning the belt, winning the tournament at Invicta. Did it kind of feel like your time in Invicta, like you sort of achieved as much as you could, and like the UFC was the next natural step, or did you still feel like there were some things that you could have accomplished uh, with Invicta? Yeah, there was nothing really there for me after. I mean, I, I won the belt. Um, I, uh, you know, what else was there? I was, I went against, I did this tournament against, you know, their top eight girls that were all in the tournament. Um, there was nothing pretty much there for me anymore. I mean, the girls got, the the girls that just got cut from the UFC, um, you know, they were in the tournament. So I think I pretty much... Uh, put a statement when once I won won the belt on May 3rd I think you know I was kind of 
I was expecting the UFC to call me. It was just a matter of time. And, you know, if Shannon wanted me to fight one or two more fights, I would have done that. Um, but, it, it uh, you know, Sean Shelby had called her and told her, we, you know, we want her or Mick Maynard. I don't know. One of them matchmaker called them, called Shannon and, you know, they wanted me. So it was just a matter of time. And uh, I know this fight took place in Sacramento and that you're out in California. How far is Sacramento away from where you are? It's about two hours, two and a half hours away. Um, I definitely had a lot of a lot of family who who went out and you know support me supported me that night, and it was awesome. Like everything pretty much played out in my favor. Um, you know, from me kind of talking about how awesome it would have been if I got in the car to me actually getting on the car to friends and family able to actually see me live, and it was my USC debut. Walked away with a victory. Um, I couldn't really complain. And uh, coming off of this fight, obviously a successful debut, uh, how are you feeling physically? Do you have any injuries? Are you coming out of this fight uh, unscathed? I mean, how are you feeling? I feel great. Um, I want to get back in there as soon as possible. I mean, I'm not injured. Um, I'm, I'm training. I'm fine. I, I feel healthy. I feel good. Um, I'm fine. I, ideally, I would want to get back in there. I, I had, you know, talked to Sean Shelby about getting back in there in October because they're literally going to be in San Francisco, which is 90 minutes away from where I live. Um, so it's like, why not? Why not get back in there? I know uh, we have an idea when we'd like to see you again. You mentioned San Francisco. Uh, just one more for you. want to end it on a high note. Ideally, the UFC asks you, who do you want for that San Francisco card? Uh, who's that person that you'd want next, ideally, to help you further in your career? I'll take anybody, I think, at this point. Um, I think a top 10 is going to is gonna move me into the right direction of where I'm headed to, to reach for that strap. So um, I, ideally, I'd want a top 10. Um, I know that there are a couple of girls who are sitting on the sidelines who are injured and some of them who are already scheduled out. Um, so at this point, I'll take anything. Um, I'll take anything, but something that's going to move me in, in the right direction, uh, I know it'll be one of the top 10 girls. All right. Well, thank you so much for the time. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, congratulations on the successful debut, the victory, everything that went well for you. Hey, thank you very much.